This is an EV battery. By 2030, India may need millions of these to power its electric vehicle sales. But to make these batteries, India relies heavily on China. We told you why in a previous video. We also told you that there is a way India can reduce its dependence on China. That is, by creating a circular economy. What exactly is that? Before we proceed, remember to subscribe to Deccan Herald's YouTube channel and click on the bell icon to never miss a new release. You can also follow us on all our social media handles. And now, back to the circular economy. A big reason why EV sales in India haven't really taken off recently is due to battery issues. There have been safety concerns, production costs are high, and so far we have been unable to standardize various cell technologies. All these issues can be addressed if India were to produce its own cells and batteries. Unfortunately, to do this, India doesn't have enough rare earth metals like lithium, cobalt, and nickel. This is where a circular economy comes in. The circular economy essentially means metals that uh, can be you know, sort of extracted by recycling instead of digging up the earth and putting them back into the EV supply chain, right? So if you look at what the essential problem circular economy is trying to solve in the context of EVs is that at least 50% of the cost of an EV is the cost of a lithium ion battery, out of which at least 35% or more is the cost of metals that make up this uh, lithium ion battery, which include cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, uh, graphite and others, right? At the current known sources of cobalt and current utilization rates, the world will run out of cobalt by 2030, okay? Similarly, take lithium. Almost 60% of the world's lithium is mined in the Bolivia argentina Triangle, which is also known as the world's driest region. To extract one ton of lithium using a traditional lithium mining process requires more than 500,000 gallons of water. So every single battery material, which is a very, very important constituent of the EV ecosystem, has significant uh, ESG issues and significant supply security issues. If the EV boom continues, India could have nearly 1,45,000 tons of used lithium-ion batteries by 2030. And all this would currently end up in landfills. This defeats the purpose of green mobility. A circular economy could prevent this by recovering the metals from the end-of-life batteries and putting them back into the EV ecosystem. The metals that come out of recycled uh, streams and recycled output, like for example the metals that Adhiro is extracting, they are seen as the ones that come out of a mine. There is no change in chemical property, there is no change in thermal property, there is no change in physical property, there is no change at all. It is as good or similar, same as it comes from a mine. Whether you take cobalt, whether you take lithium carbonate, whether you take graphite, nickel, manganese, copper, all of that. So the beauty of metals is you can recycle them infinite amount of times as long as the right technology to do so and they do not lose any of their quality. The problem in India is not that EV batteries are not being recycled. There are a few places where this is being done. The problem is that whatever is recycled is not being reintroduced or it doesn't make its way back into the EV ecosystem. Why? We don't have local cell manufacturers who can use these recycled metals. Today, the extracted material gets sold. So, for example, in our case, the lithium carbonate goes back to the pharmaceutical industry in India. The pharmaceutical industry uses lithium carbonate as a chemical compound in uh, psychotropic drugs to reduce the activity of the brain. So, our purity from scrap batteries is pharmaceutical grade, which is better than battery grade. Cobalt goes into speciality chemicals industry in the country. India has, apart from battery, other industries uses for cobalt and we sell there. At this point in time, just because India does not have an ecosystem for lithium and cell manufacturing, we are also exporting our cobalt and lithium outside India. On 24th March 2022, the Ministry of Heavy Industries announced incentives worth 18,100 crore rupees. This is to promote local battery cell production. Four firms including Ola, Hyundai, Reliance New Energy and Rajesh Exports were awarded under the Protection Linked Incentive or PLI scheme for Advanced Chemistry Cell Battery Storage. This has been planned to help India's burgeoning EV ecosystem. With this, the equation is likely to change and this is why a circular economy could reduce or even perhaps eliminate the need for India to rely on other countries. So definitely the industry has great growth potential. Definitely the industry is profitable. Definitely the industry will create a lot of jobs, right? And we are scaling up fast as we speak. Second point is that at 
uh, in our own estimates, and we've discussed that at length with Niti Aayog, India by recycling all the end of life uh, lithium and batteries can make sure that over a period of time, it does not need to import any cobalt, any lithium, any graphite. It can become completely self-liant on battery materials or critical battery materials, just by making sure that all the end of life lithium batteries are collected and recycled properly. Apart from the obvious benefits of a circular economy, it is also important to optimally use the batteries for the secondary applications before they are discarded for recycling. Our batteries uh, can also be having uh, can also have a secondary life uh, to it, right? Uh, they're they're great in terms of energy storage. That's something that uh, we can look at as a secondary life. Uh, while for a mobility use case, you might have a 1400, 1500 kind of a cycles uh, up to which a battery can be used. For energy storage, that can go up to 5000 cycles, which means it basically extends the life of the battery. There is no doubt that India needs a circular economy where EV batteries are recycled properly and the OEMs can use them again in the EVs. It makes EVs cheap to buy and also addresses environmental and social issues like we discussed earlier. But the government should bring in strict policies and norms that can boost the battery recycling industry with clear environmental and workforce guidelines. After all, how long can we rely on ever-diminishing minds and an unfriendly neighbour? That's all from us today. Is there anything else you'd like us to pick up on electric vehicles? Send us your suggestions in the comments below. Thanks for watching.